Hey guys, so today we're making a first person shooter pixel art image. A while ago we made a first person image that involved a character fighting a skeleton. In this case, this is a little bit different in terms of I want it to be a first person shooter inspired image. Uh, there are some animation things along the way that I thought might be a fun challenge. I'll describe those a little bit later in the video, but at this point I'm just setting things up and we can revisit that other stuff later, so let's just see the setup. I knew that in doing this one, I wanted the arrangement of features on the screen to be very similar to the previous one that we did, where it has the character portrait in the bottom right hand corner of the screen reacting to whatever is happening, then it has some kind of other HUD element in the top right hand corner of the screen, and it has all these little small elements along the bottom that has things like experience points, health, all those kind of things that indicate some interaction with the character. Uh, very similar, like I said, to the last one that we did. So I arranged them that way here. You can see me work on the character portrait now and I'll revisit in just a moment. And looking at the character portrait, you may notice, if you know this character, that it has a lot of resemblance to a character named Kamen Rider. Just a Japanese superhero type character that has a kind of a bug-like look about his helmet. I wanted to reference that kind of stuff here, but I also wanted to reference things like the aesthetics of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or Power Rangers. Those things weren't necessarily a big part of my childhood, just because I didn't watch those things as a kid. But I always thought the aesthetics of them were super cool, and I wanted to kind of use that as a launching point for this image. Because I think that it has a really nice kind of like goofy, comedic, eccentric kind of vibe that I want to be present in this image. All right, so we've got that all set up. I've got everything in the spot that I want it to be. I've arranged my layers in a way that I'm able to move them pretty easily. So for example, you notice down here where it says hand with gun. If I take that and I move around my hand with gun, then it will move it independently of everything else. The same is true for things like knife hand. If I click on that, that's the hand that has the knife on it. I can move it around. Obviously, I'm going to be stuck redrawing pieces and parts like this down here, but it is what it is. So that's just as part of the animation. Everything's in its spot. Let's jump into us talking about how to zoom in with this gun hand here. Following that initial setup with the hand just holding the gun, I did the aiming down sights version of this gun. You'll notice that I have the other one brought up as a frame of reference just to kind of figure out what it might look like if it was scoped in. I find that for me, whenever I'm animating a big sweeping animation or there's a lot of transition, that if I do the first frame and I do the last frame of this transition of whatever object I'm animating first, it's a lot easier for me to be able to fill in the intermediate frames. And I also find that the intermediate frames in general can be a little bit rougher, a little bit looser around the edges because your brain will fill in that information that needs to exist in the space between those two things here. In this moment, I'm just setting up the scope down animation, which will be the end of this kind of sweep as we hit this shooting animation. All right, so with that out of the way, I now am creating this intermediate frame transition between it being held and it being scoped in. Notice that as I start this, I have my ending frame and I have my beginning frame or images set up next to each other and I'm creating the space in between that. When I initially started this, I thought I was gonna have to have a lot more frames of transition and I was a little bit intimidated, but I actually found out later down the road with the scope and it being held and the transitional frame that that was enough to be able to create a believable movement. I was actually kind of surprised in that and I was actually grateful for that as well. It's made the animation a lot easier, but again, like I said, your brain will invent that intermediate part. In my experience, three frames has tended to be enough to create some basic movement. And this time, three was enough.
All right, and here we have it. We have the gun just being held. We have the gun in an intermediate stage, and we have the gun being zoomed in all the way. I'm actually pulling this from the final animation just because I thought it would be easier to show it from there. But now let's dive into the actual animation part of you seeing how this is all laid out. All right, so you can see the preview on the right-hand side of the screen that just kind of shows how things are playing out as it goes along. You can see I've already animated some of the gun going from being held to being zoomed in. At this point, I'm just animating that little guy jump out from behind the rock and shoot at the player character. I always find that it's difficult to show the animation parts of this just because it is such a long, tedious process. So I will show you guys some snippets from this along the way that I think that are particularly interesting. One thing that you can see that I'm doing here is putting a white outline that goes around the actual gun itself. I did this on the other hand that was holding the knife, and the reason why I'm doing this is because I felt like I was losing a little bit of contrast in the process of this, where the gun felt like it was kind of blending into the background, like they were very similar colors. So I did this to kind of separate it and make it feel like it sat on top of the actual image and the characters that were getting shot. You can see the animation, how things are playing out. I think at this point is the part where I got excited with the result, because I felt like I was getting what I had originally envisioned. And that intimidation that I originally had started to fade away at this point. And then I felt like the outline on the actual reticle itself was a little bit distracting, so I just removed that from every single one of them. Um, the only thing left now is just to show you guys the final animation. Alright, that's it. The end. If you liked the video, make sure to like it. If you want more stuff like this, subscribe to the channel. I'll try my best to post more frequently. Other than that, that's it. Bye.